if you're building your first landing page in HubSpot, sometimes it's challenging to know exactly where to start. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to build your first landing page in HubSpot, where to find all the components, how that kind of relates to the themes and the drag and drop components called modules, how they all fit together, global navigation items, and lastly, how that links to the subdomains or domains inside of your HubSpot portal. So at the recording of this video, landing pages used to live in the marketing tab and now they live on the side navigation in the content tab. So let's go ahead and navigate over there to the side. We're gonna to go to content and then here you're gonna see landing pages. So if you don't have any landing pages set up for the first time, what you're gonna see is just kind of a blank area. But since we do have landing pages set up here, let's talk a little bit about what we see first. So first of all, we've got domains here and your domain, if you're new to HubSpot and you haven't set up your domains, you're just gonna have one that HubSpot provides to you just like this. It's gonna have some sort of a numeric a setting and then hssites.com. You can actually publish a landing page on this, but it's not gonna be on your website's domain. We'll talk about that when we get to the publishing stages. But to create the landing page, the first thing you're going to do is you're gonna click create, and then you have the options here from website page or landing page. Now again, if you don't have Marketing Plus or you don't have CMS Hub, which is what we used to be called, the difference is website pages, you're usually hosting your entire website on HubSpot and it's under your primary domain. So let's say that my domain is hubspotsites.com. That's my main domain. That would be where a website page lives. And then a landing page typically lives on a subdomain like info.mydomain or resources.mydomain.com. So we'll talk about that again as we get into specifics, but we're just gonna create a landing page here. Now, again, when you have this set up, it's going to ask you if you have multiple pages or multiple domains set up under your HubSpot portal, it's going to ask you which subdomain you want. You don't actually have to do that right now. You can actually choose this and change that subdomain later. So for now, we're just gonna call this our test landing page. Now, if you're creating a landing page for the first time and you want some best practices, we do have a webinar that we talk all about best practices and landing pages, how to think about them, how to design them. In this particular tutorial, I'm just showing you how to set it up in HubSpot. All right, so now we're in this area called theme templates. So themes are actually what the entire HubSpot CMS or what the content management system, now called Marketing Plus, now called Content Hub, is actually built on. So to build a website, just like anything, if you're building in Wix or WordPress or Squarespace, in this case, in HubSpot, you have a theme which serves as your general settings for all of the different things that you do from a content perspective, in this case, landing pages on the backside of HubSpot. Now, if you happen to be getting into HubSpot for the first time and you don't have a theme set up, this particular area will actually ask you to select your theme. So we've already done that, but basically at a glance, that means that there is a bunch of themes that power the building of individual website pages on the HubSpot Content Hub. So in this case, we installed the growth theme. If you wanna change your theme, you would just click here it would offer you a variety of options. You could also go to the marketplace. For the purposes of building your first landing page, you can use this growth theme. You will see it when you click on uh, change a theme as well. And when you have that theme installed, you're gonna see that we have a variety of pages we can choose from that are pre-built. And let's say, for instance, you wanna use this landing page, you would select it. Well, for the purposes of this tutorial, let's actually say that we're not gonna select one of those and we wanna use a blank page and build one of our own. So we're going to go ahead and click select template. And now we're into the drag and drop editor. So we're halfway there in terms of the page functionality, but now we've got to do some drag and drop to build the functionality into the page. So on the left-hand side, we've got our ad area and we've got three different things that come inside of a HubSpot landing page. You've got modules, you've got sections, and you've got layouts. So layouts are going to be the way in which the sections on the page work. So if you've used any other email marketing program, even if you've done any layout at all on a website, you've got this like one column, two column, two thirds with one third column, so on and so forth. So let's say that I wanted to actually pull a layout in, so I'd do that first. I'm gonna drop that module in, and then we've got sections. So sections would actually be the whole entire components of layout and modules together, and I could pull this entire section in, and it drops in both the layout as well as the modules. And then if I go to the modules, these are the individual, think about like building Legos. These are the individual pieces that go into the page and you can kind of build whatever you want from here. So let's go ahead and add in, if I wanna hit this plus button, I can also then choose sections or I could go to modules. So in this case, let's pretend that we're going to build a uh, landing page that has an ebook in the middle of it. And so we're going to need some sort of a contact form to get people into this ebook. And now we've got this contact section and a form. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of this section. If I wanna just delete this out of here, I would just delete like this, and then I could drop more modules in here, or I could actually delete this whole section if I wanted to start over. 
I can actually hit undo if I've done something wrong, which I love because that's so much of how I work in like Google Docs and Microsoft Word, but I can undo. And then I could also go over here to this contents area and you'll see the sort of breakdown of the page in the way that it's structured some, from a, like an accordion standpoint. So I can both see it on the right hand side and I can edit it over here on the left as well. So I'm gonna go back to my modules and we're gonna add in a couple more modules here. So let's say I've got my information here on the left. I don't really want to put this. I have a form and let's say I wanna add in text. So I'm gonna add rich text in on the side of this form. So as I drag it in, you could see that it's going to orient to just this two column here. And then I can add a module here at the top. Well, let's say at the top, I wanna to add in, let's go back to our, we're gonna add in an image. We're gonna add an image slider. Okay, so we've got an image slider and we've got options here to add our images. So each one of these modules has its own settings and inside the settings, you can edit the text or the image itself. So in this case, let's go ahead and browse our images. We're going to use one that we've entered in here before. And this is our alt text that came automatically with a caption in this module, but I don't wanna use that. So now we've got an image, we've got the reader something over here on the left, and then we've got a form on the right. Now, let's say that I wanna put on the left that I'm actually using something uh, related to, oh, how about download our free ebook and learn more about how to use HubSpot for landing pages. Perfect, and this is what we now have in this area. So I might wanna add myself a headline. So let's actually move to back to the text. We're gonna pull in one line of text here. It's gonna go over that section. And if I wanted to add in this area and call it, um, don't miss this free resource, I could do that. And then I could style it right over here on the left. So each module has its own style settings as well as in line editing or in the WYSIWYG editor over here on the right. So I've got um, this topography, I'm gonna to select this, let's make it larger and let's go ahead and bold it. Okay. Great, now we've got the option to do that. To use a form on a landing page, we actually have to have a form already created or we need to go create a form over in the form creation area, which is in the marketing tab. So I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of here. This does auto save, but I do need to put a page title in, which is here under settings. So we're gonna put a page title in. We have the internal page name. The page title is gonna be what shows to the greater world once it's published. So free landing page, if I could type. And then this temporary slug, again, we're using that domain that I mentioned earlier, and we're going to use this slug and then we're good to go. Okay, so now that I can see this, it says I could publish it if I want to, which I don't. We're gonna exit out of that and go over to our form area. So let's go ahead and create a form. When we go into the marketing area, you're gonna click on marketing and forms. And we're gonna create a new form. We have a whole video about everything you need to know about forms. We're just gonna do something very, very simple here. We're going to create a form and even on the left hand side we're going to use the ebook download form because it's already pre-built to do just that so we're going to start that let's call it the landing page ebook form and we're going to update this again so many other settings and forms to watch out for we're just going to create this so we have it okay let's go back to our content areas so content landing pages and then in this landing page area You've got all your landing pages here, but let's say you've got kind of a hot mess. You can also search by uh, published status. You could also filter it by keywords. You could filter it by campaigns. If you're using any of these tagging uh, systems, go ahead and do that. But here we're just gonna click right into our page. Okay, so we've got the image, we've got this headline. We don't have a form yet, so let's click into this. And now it's going to ask me for a form title, which is going to appear above the form. This is optional, you don't actually have to put this in here, but if you wanna select a form, let's go to the one we just created and we're going to go to landing page, form, perfect. And let's put the title in just so you can see this. So if we put in test form, so you can see that that form title goes at the top there. So if you don't wanna use that, just leave it blank. If you do wanna use it and like this font looks a little funky, so go over to styles and you can actually adjust that style here right inside of the module. So we're gonna remove this and now we've got form content. So this is actually pulling over from our form in HubSpot. If you don't wanna have specific fields here, you can actually choose to hide them. You can also add another form field here. Keep in mind, this will affect the whole form if you have it embedded on other pages. So kind of word to the wise, if you do use the same form across multiple landing pages, that will do wonders for you when it comes to running workflows and updating forms. 
but it does complicate things if you don't know where those forms are embedded. Again, lots more on that. If that happens to be your issue, feel free to drop us a note and we can chat about that separately. All right, so you can actually change your button text if you want to. You can insert the CAPTCHA, data privacy, and then you can actually put a thank you in the settings that happens once the form is submitted right here on the landing page. Or you could redirect to an external page, or again, I'm giving you lots of options. You can choose to have a very specific email sent. All of this is right inside the landing page function. If you don't wanna use what's pre-built in here, you can use a workflow to then do that on the backside using the automation of workflows once the page is published. So for now, we're just gonna leave all of this as is because we actually are going to use a, um, an inline thank you for requesting this resource. In this case, let's say that like, since it's a landing page ebook, we're gonna say thank you for requesting this resource and we actually just wanna insert a link. So let's say here is your ebook. And I'm going to hyperlink this and I'm going to insert the link and I'm actually gonna send them to a file. We're gonna select that file and then let's pretend that it happens to be this specific. Uh, let's pretend that this one, all right. So that is our ebook file. And then again, once we look for the rest of this, everything else should be good to go. Okay, so now we've got this field, we've got all these things. Now, if you look at what we've set up so far, you'll notice like, oh, we haven't touched the header or the footer. How do I do that? Well, let's make sure that we have the rest of the page filled out and then we'll take that next step. So let's kind of navigate through the pieces here at the top. You've got the, the file. If you wanted to convert this to a different page language, uh, you certainly could. You can run an A-B test on your pages. Keep in mind some of these functions that I'm showing you may not be available in your level. It might be enterprise or pro. And then if you wanted to easily clone this page and actually then use it for another setting, you could. Um, if you wanted to uh, change your theme, you could actually change your theme here. So that would apply a whole new skin to this look and feel. If you wanted to view the version history, you can do that as well. For settings, all the things that you typically use to optimize a landing page are gonna be found in this settings area. So as I click into here, it's gonna pull up in this window and you kind of navigate through these things one by one. So here we've got the page name, we've got the page title, we've got the meta description. And again, we've also got AI here. If you want some help writing the meta description, that's cool. You can add this page to a marketing campaign and that's how you might track how it's performing relative to lead generation across all your assets. This piece is really important because you can specify what you want your image to be on social media. A lot of people forget this. Pro tip, if you are cloning pages and using them for future campaigns, you do wanna make sure that this gets captured and updated. Because I've seen so many times clients will use this, create additional landing pages, and then forget to ever update the metadata or update their featured image. And it, this happened to us actually today. We had an image that popped up and we're like, where did that come from? It was from cloning a page from a long time ago. So then all these pieces are updated and that is what's the setting area and then help is there in case you need it. So again, now we're gonna have the last look at our header and footer navigation and these are powered by what's called global content. So when I click into global content, what that's going to do is say, are you sure? And that means if you edit something like this, global content is applied to all of the template. So I'm, I'm editing what I feel like is my landing page here, but if I open this up, you'll notice that this global header is actually the header on all of the templates inside of this particular theme. So if I have other team members that have other landing pages that are using this global header and I edit this, this will actually cause changes on theirs as well. So if I wanna edit this, I can actually then choose where my logo gets laid out. I can choose um, at the size of my logo. I can choose if I wanna use the one in my default brand styles. Uh, I can actually then specify which menu. Um, if you click on edit, you'll actually see that you're gonna go to the navigation menu. So it's gonna port you all the way over here to content navigation menu. So people will often ask, how do I know which menu I'm using? Well, if you look up here, it's gonna say that you're using this default menu. When I'm in the menus area, you can see that there's multiple menus to choose from here and I'm using the default one. So that's actually going to be how to edit the menu inside of a landing page if you happen to keep this at the top. Now, best practices for landing pages would be to keep it as clean and link free as possible because you want them to do the one specific action. However, it's pretty common for businesses to want to put things up at the top in a global navigation per se. So that would be how to edit the global content editor. Again, if you happen to use this in, if you have a custom developed theme and you're developing landing pages, this might be a question for your developer, but in this case, this is gonna be easy. So if we do make changes, we would publish them and it's gonna ask you to publish to all eight assets, which is in all of the group of pages, but it will then affect, it will, uh, affect your landing page. 
So let's actually do this. Let's go ahead and delete one of our um, menu items. We're gonna delete the default blog. We're gonna save this. And then we're going to go back here and we're gonna select the menu again. And we're gonna apply those changes. And you'll notice that that default HubSpot blog removed itself from the menu. And then I'm going to go ahead and click publish to eight assets. And then I'm going to do that. And it will take me back to my original landing page. So you'll see that that changed. And then at the bottom, I've still got my footer here. Same sort of thing. This is global content. So just like I edited in the header, this global content, global footer would be something we can edit here as well. Same sort of thing we had before. We've got these sections. We can add stuff and drag and drop here. And that's going to be how that landing page shakes out. So we're not going to make any changes to this footer, but if we did, it'd be the same process I just followed. Now let's go back to our landing page. We've got things here. We want to go ahead and preview what this looks like. Now you can see that you can preview here on the um, desktop version. We can also preview what a tablet would look like and what the mobile version would look like. So as you can see, one of the challenges a lot of us have that are not native UI UX developers is typically the tablet view is one that needs some work. Um, but the mobile view needs to be something that if you think about this, where do I ask them to take action? Is it readable? How big is the text? Yada, yada. That's how you want to make sure that you take a look at this. So we're going to go back and we're going to go ahead and choose to publish this landing page. And now when it's published, it will give you this URL and you can check that landing page and make sure that it all works the way you want it to. So that is how to get that landing page live. Now, a few last things you want to keep in mind. I talked a little bit about the domains and again, back to these settings when we get a general and the page URL is going to be in the domain that you connected on the backside. So how do you get there? Well, let's go back to these advanced areas. And I was over here with the navigation. If you go to tools, this is in settings. You're going to scroll down and go to tools and go to content domain and URLs. Now domain and URLs is where you're going to set your domains for your landing pages. So in this case, we've got domains and I've got brand domains, primary domains and secondary domains. So your primary domains is going to be where you actually set up those landing pages. So test.simplestrat.com is the one that we're using in this case. If you wanted to use info.yourbrand.com, whatever. So if I go back to that landing page and I want to select a different domain and I pull this down, you'll see that this test portal is available here. And that's actually where that domain would then shake out. So if you need help with your domains, that's something that HubSpot has a lot of resources for. We'll drop some links into the description as well. Okay. The last thing I want to point out before we exit out of our landing page is these publishing options. So let's say you're publishing a landing page to capture registrations for an event, or you might want to have uh, something happening for an exclusive offer. There is an opportunity to go to publishing options up here and you can choose to schedule an update. You can choose to schedule an unpublished. You can choose to schedule it in the future. So again, you don't have to have it published on the time that you want it to go live, you can actually do some scheduling here and you can schedule that unpublished as well. So those are just some really like small things to keep in mind when you're using your landing pages to make it a little bit easier. Last golden nugget is probably my favorite. I've talked about this in other videos, but it's the idea of saved sections. If you happen to be creating a lot of landing pages and you find yourself creating the same layout over and over again, you can create saved sections. So I've talked about this in marketing emails, but here it is inside of a landing page. If you're in a section where you see this little down arrow. So right now that would contain this graphic. It would contain this headline, the form, and then the, the content here. But I can see that there's a drop down, I can actually choose to create a saved section. So if I save this and I might say, this is the, again, it's asking me to say hero section, but I could have a description and it shows me what this looks like. I can click on save. So let's say it's the graphic plus content and form. Okay. Click save and it's saved successfully. So this is how this works. If I were to delete this section, and let's go back to our sections here. Now we've got this save section. You just saw me do it. I'm gonna pull this over into our layout and there it is right there. I don't have to do a thing. So that's it, that's save sections. And that is the whole soup to nuts on how to build a landing page. Keep in mind, it's gonna vary based on your level of HubSpot or maybe your theme. But if you have any questions specific to the stuff that I showed here, drop a comment in below and we'll make sure to address them. And let us know what topics you'd like us to cover in future videos. And until next time, hit that subscribe button and we'll see you soon.